Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another Chess End Games video. Today we are moving on past the elementary endings onto king and pawn endings. As a king and one pawn generally cannot create mating threats or otherwise force a direct win, the crucial question is whether the pawn can promote into a queen. There are many complicated positions with the enemy king in front of the pawn, yet they all observe the rule of the critical squares. What are the critical squares? For all pawns, excepting those on the A and H files and also those on the 6th rank, the critical squares are the three squares symmetrically positioned two rows in front of the pawn. For this pawn on B2, the three critical squares are A4, B4, and C4. The critical squares for all pawns on the 6th rank are the three symmetrical squares on the 8th rank as well as the three symmetrically placed squares immediately before the pawn. The critical squares for this pawn on d6 are c7, d7, e7, c8, d8, and e8. And lastly, for the pawns on the rook's files there are only two critical squares on the adjacent file on the 7th and 8th ranks. The critical squares for the pawn on h4 are g7 and g8. The rule of the theory of critical squares always holds. White wins by promoting his pawn provided he can gain control of one of the critical squares. A distant black king has some prospect against the pawn only if the white king is unable to support it by controlling the criti critical squares on its way to the 8th rank. In this case, the vital question, can the black king catch and capture the white pawn on its way to promotion, may be answered quickly and without any calculation by using the rule of the square. The imagined square is simply formed by drawing a diagonal from the pawn to the 8th rank, or the 1st rank in the case of a black pawn, and then creating a square with the diagonal as the diagonal of the square. If the black king can enter this square on his move, the game is drawn as the black king will be able to catch the pawn before promotion. The one exception to this rule is if a pawn is on the second rank, as then it can move two spaces on its first move. In this case, the critical square would be calculated from the third rank, and we would find it here. In this position, black to move draws, since after king to g4, uh, he enters the pawn's square from on the squares g4, g8, c8, and c4. He is now inside the square. We can tr we can play out the position to see if it really is drawn. c5, king to f5, c6, king to e6, c7, king to d7, c8, queen, with check, and then king takes c8, drawing the game. Thanks to the rule of the square, it is easy to determine that in this position, white to move wins. After c5, the square has shrunk. The square is now this big, and the black king can no longer enter the square on his next turn. Therefore, king to g4 loses, because after c6, king to f5, c7, uh, king to e6, and the white pawn will promote into a queen, winning the game for white. When the black king is placed in front of the pawn, the outcome of the game depends on whether white can occupy one of the critical squares in front of the pawn, thus assuring its promotion. The critical squares of this pawn, as we already said, are e7, d7, c7, e8, d8, and c8. The answer to this question, can white occupy one of the critical squares, is provided by the opposition. What is opposition? Opposition is a position of kings facing each other on the same file, rank, or diagonal with an odd number of squares between them. If there is only one square between them, the opposition is usually known as the full opposition, whereas the opposition where the kings are three to five squares apart is referred to as the distant opposition. It is essential to know that in these cases, the player who is not to move is said to have the opposition. Let us first examine the case where it is white to move. He wins with a simple d7. This forces the enemy king out, that is his only legal move, and then white can play e7 
taking control of one of the pawn's critical squares, assuring its promotion on the next move. However, with black to move in this position, the game is drawn, because the correct move, the only winning move here, is king to e8. Here, black takes the opposition, and white will not be able to, and will never be able to, occupy any of the critical squares in front of the pawn. We can try with d7 check, but then black simply plays king to d8, and white is in Zugzwang. This is a German expression for move compulsion. Any move that white makes will invariably decrease the quality of his position. You can see here that this move draws by stalemate. The black king has nowhere to go. Meanwhile, any other move would be moving away from the pawn, allowing the black king to capture it and draw the king by lack of material. The rule of the opposition holds true for all similar positions except those with A and H pawns. These positions are always drawn if black controls the promotion square, in this case on H8. For instance, even with black to move, white has the opposition, but it is to no avail since he obviously cannot reach the G7 square, no matter what black plays. After king to h8, uh, and then h7 would result in a stalemate. However, if white were to try to shuffle things around and uh, play for the win, perhaps by king to h5, king g8, black simply continues moving between these squares. He could also play king to h7, so long as he keeps an eye on this promotion square. King to g6, king to h8, and we are in the same position where h7 would draw. And even if white attempts to give him the move when black is on g8 so he can play h7 with check, for example, by king to g5, king to g8, king to f6, king to h8, king to g6, king to g8, h7 check is still drawn because after king to h8, white either moves to h6, protecting the pawn and ending the game as a draw with stalemate, or leaves the protection of the pawn, ending the game as a draw by lack of sufficient material. That's it. That is all you need to know to play correctly in king and pawn versus king endgames. With this information, you should be able to either draw if you are in the uh, losing or drawing position, or successfully convert your pawn advantage into a win if you are in a winning position. As always, thank you very, very much for watching to the very end. I really appreciate it. Please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. And I'll see you next time.